In other news, a senior Ukrainian official says Russia is throwing all its power at the key city of Severodonetsk, where its soldiers are locked in fierce street battles. Morning elsewhere this morning, the Queen had only been on the throne for six years when Wales last qualified for the World Cup. This evening, Gareth Bale and his Welsh team face Ukraine in Cardiff with the winner making it to Qatar. The World Health Organization has warned that Ukraine's health system is under severe pressure in this 100 days of intense war. Dr. Jano Harbitz, the WHO representative in the country, has been telling the BBC that people are really struggling to get to health services. There have been several powerful explosions in the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv. The city has been largely spared in recent months as Russian forces concentrate their attacks in the eastern regions of Luhansk and Donetsk. In his nightly address, President Zelensky said that there was street fighting in the eastern city of Severodonetsk, but insisted that his country's forces were standing up to the Russian offensive. Well, let's go live to Kyiv to our correspondent, Joe Inwood. Uh, Joe, morning to you again. Uh, thanks for joining us again this morning. Just bring us up to date, first of all, if you would, on, on the situation in Kyiv. So a couple of hours ago, there were some powerful explosions. I must say we couldn't hear them here, but reports on social media. Uh, and over in the west there, there is a thick black plume of smoke. Now, I can tell you about it, but we can't show it to people because of broadcasting security laws. But we understand it hit a, an industrial site to the west of the capital. We understand that nobody was killed, but one person was taken to hospital. It is a stark reminder that this is a country still at war. Now, in reality, that war, though, is mostly focused not here in the capital, but in the east of the country, in this area called the Donbass. And we've seen some very interesting reports over the last few days about this town called Severodonetsk. Now, this has been the real focal point of Russia's push into the Donbass. This is where all of their armor, their infantry, their artillery is massed, uh, and they've been trying to push through. Now, it seemed for many days like they were making steady progress, incremental gains, pushing through Ukrainian lines, and it looked all but inevitable that they would capture the city. But then yesterday, we got these reports of Ukrainian counteroffensive, that the strategic withdrawal they were making was actually a feint of some form, and they seemed to have taken back the Ukrainians quite a large portion of the city. Now, I should say it's really difficult to know exactly what's going on. People can't get in, they can't get out, and the phone lines are down. But something is happening in Severodonetsk, and it could be significant for the outcome of this war. Now, the Queen had only been on the throne for five years, the last time Wales played in a football World Cup. Later today, they'll look to return to the competition with victory in a crucial playoff final against Ukraine. It's a fixture in which Wales's players and fans will have to put emotions to one side to overcome a nation many neutrals are rooting for. Becky Johnson reports. When Wales line up against Ukraine, support in this household will be split. Maria and her son Robert have been getting used to life in Cardiff. <laughs> they left Ukraine six weeks ago to live with Sarah and her family in Wales. But the mutual support they share will be tested for 90 minutes. Maria will be at the match cheering Ukraine. So emotions, so very big. I think I will be happy and I believe Ukrainian team <laughs> will be win. <laughs> uh, one man said, uh, in Sunday we are not friend, but in Monday we will be friend again. <laughs> for Wales, though, the stakes are high. The players preparing to fight for a place in the World Cup for the first time in over 60 years. But to get there, they'll need to beat a side who'll have support from around the world. If we could take away what they're going through in a heartbeat, we absolutely would, every single one of the staff and players. Now, this is business, and that's it. It's not spoken about in camp. This is an opportunity for Wales, for us, to qualify to a, for a World Cup, and, and full focus is on that. At this pub in Cardiff, memories from Euro 2016, when Wales reached the semi-finals, and tributes to their star player, as the nation hopes Gareth Bale and the team can build on recent success in the Euros. But eight-year-old James and his dad are nervous. I'm feeling a little bit 
scared about Ukraine beating us? Not in my lifetime we've been in the World Cup, so I think um, obviously after the Euros and the excitement of what Wales football have done, yeah, fingers crossed. If the result doesn't go our way, I don't think anybody will regret Ukraine will go into the World Cup finals in, you know, in the current situation, which is absolutely tragic. The Ukraine side are fresh from victory in Scotland. They came out fighting midweek for their first game since their country was invaded. Team and manager determined to give their country something to celebrate. For both teams, it'll be emotional as they kick off here in Cardiff. Wales are used to being the popular underdogs in big matches, but this time they'll feel the support of the world against them as they try to do what no Welsh team has achieved for more than six decades. A win would mean the world to Welsh fans, but who would want to bet against Ukraine in this game of survival? Becky Johnson, Sky News, Cardiff.